The National Football League begins steeping in honeysuckle in hot summer to sweeten an appetite for impact. requires a quick head for technique and it favors fast flying hands and feet for execution but the essential demand is a stomach for the game winning is gut pride hey you better get it up starting with this I don't know whether you're pacing yourself or you're letting this weather get you, but it's been just about disgraceful now. Let's get in here and go. You'll be out here for about two hours. I don't care how much you know about football. If you show me you can't hit, you don't belong here, you better get in here angry, both sides, and let's go to work. Now get it up. During the preseason, pride goes and comes in many ways before the fall. going on with you today, Randy? If you can't run with authority, don't run. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it! Just keep away from me. Got 15 coming. 15 coming. Now just get away. Incomplete pass. 15. That was a two. The side. The side. First down. Quiet now. Okay, that's for some right conduct half the distance. Don't throw that forearm. No, he is not. Quit throwing that forearm. From the top, it looks executive and slick, but it's more. The game has soul. Washington beat the Bears in Chicago opening day. The next week they made a personal appearance in New Orleans and got freeze dried. is a strategy which isolates players one-on-one -on -one in order to exploit some advantage in speed or size. The New York Giants outmatched Pittsburgh for openers. Sunday of the season, the Redskins and the Giants made a freewheeling match of contrasting team styles. The Redskins often seem like roustabouts at a carnival, setting up around hip-slinging Sonny Jurgensen. But with all his easy ways and classic skating motion, slinging Sonny is the past master of the game. Grant Harkington is more exotic. When he scrambles, the New York Giants look like Roseland in a discotheque. It's 
It's not so easy to track him down. This Sunday, Tarkington and the Giants had it their way. They won their third game in a row and earned a murmur of title talk, long absent from the big town. The champion Packers were manhandled in the Central Division. Chicago Bears got so excited crunching the fresh meat in strange jerseys that they forgot to win their first two games. And then the Bears quit headhunting and locked into two Stone Age struggles with the Vikings. beat the Vikings twice, the Vikings beat the Lions twice, the Lions beat the Bears twice. week, a joker turned up in the NFL deal. The title-bound Vikings breezed into New Orleans and got freeze-dried for fools. A season turns on a game in the NFL, but which game? A team can never be sure. In New Orleans, it was the year of the Vikings game. The Saints were fully competitive after just two years in the league. When Norm Van Brocklin and Fran Talkington were together in Minnesota, Van Brocklin remarked that Talkington won games he shouldn't win, but he lost too many games he shouldn't lose. This Sunday, Talkington was working for Ali Sherman and the Giants, and Van Brocklin was the new head coach of Atlanta. Form, according to Van Brocklin, Fran Hawkington served up Atlanta's first victory. It was a good old day in Dixie, and it was a good old day when Norm Van Brocklin plucked an eye from the hated Chicago Bears, winning another game. At the other end of the Coastal Division, the 49ers, the Rams, and the Baltimore Colts were picking over a long, dried-up bone of contention. In 1967, a record of 11 wins, one loss, and two ties earned for the Baltimore Colts an entire season's worth of agony and frustration. Consequently, in 1968, the Colts snatched up that old dried bone and quickly beat the Rams over the head with it. 
and then they lay waste the NFL, like Samson among the Philistines. were stymied, the 49ers jumped them from behind and played their old rivals to a satisfactory draw which iced the coastal division for Baltimore. Cowboys came on technically charged and balanced like a clock, making time on a championship. They were the flashiest piece of work in the game. Folks believe that the pack has already been back, that the ghost of the Green Bay Packers returned and did their thing to Dallas. Cowboys got their clock cleaned. And when they came to play Cleveland for all the honor in the East, they had no time left. Cardinals beat Cleveland twice, but in the year of the game, they forgot to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Browns began badly. For five weeks, they were not related to the proud tradition of Cleveland Browns. And suddenly, they got well against Baltimore dishing up the Colts' only defeat of the NFL season. Smooth Bill Nelson charged up the Kelly machine, and a number of key young players caught a sudden case of maturity. gelled, and Cleveland streaked behind the league's leading ground gainer, Leroy Kelly, smartly into competition with Dallas for the title in the East. the play, 
but Dallas had counted sharply, mastering the advantage every time the charging Browns let slip a mistake. According to Bobby Lane, there are no losers, but time runs out. One more victory for good teams and for bad teams makes it an entirely different season, a whole new year. It's a part of the pride of the pros, the year in a game. Browns finally fired up the Kelly machine and brought order to the East. Sweet triumph. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. The Philadelphia Eagles had a conspicuous wealth of potential all-pro talent. Your job, Jim, if you should accept it, is to explain to the people in Philadelphia why this team will self-destruct in five seconds. Mission impossible. Every Sunday, game-tough players like Tom Wudashek hit with pride and abandon. When I married Tom, I knew what I was in for as a football player's wife. Okay, let's do that. Good luck. Have a great game. I never really worry about uh, injuries before the game. If they happen, they happen. But it's still hard to sit in the stands and wonder if Woody will make it through each game without being seriously injured. on your chest? Yeah. No, on the uh, end of the shoulder. Drove the clavicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Head on with Buckus. Oh, I think I'll be all right. Why don't we just turn this thing over to Moose? A little strapping, a little heat, something of that type, and we'll settle you down. All right, fine. Heck of a time trying to sleep last night with this. Well, just rolled around all night. These are tender for about 10 days, is all to me. Yeah. And uh, they won't hamper your play any at all. What I want to do is get I've got your... one hair on my chest, and you had to put it on that hair, didn't you? I was after it. Primitive people sing the poetry of this charmed life in songs about lovers and hunters. We are hunters. If you think we are after meat, you're wrong. Meat is at the butcher's. We are hunters. Do not trample the furrow, little gazelle. I am ready to show you the way you do not know. Pro football is a sport and players must sustain an edge of competitive excellence for love of the game, or they do not survive the sporting life. In the 12th game, Tom Wodeshek was the wheel horse of first sweet victory. And in the 14th game, the Eagles almost flew, playing Minnesota within inches of their Central Division title. Western Conference playoff was never in real doubt. At one point, the incredible Colts defense did not permit a touchdown through four games of the season.
played football like cold-blooded, calculating devils. The Baltimore Colts sustained themselves through 16 games as one intense man competing on the edge of excellence. After the rape of Cleveland, Baltimore was an overwhelming champion, certainly as great as any legendary champions in the rich lore of pro football. And all that remained was a cherry picking of the semi-interesting Super Bowl. And suddenly, as comedian Mort Saul said of another matter, millions of people found themselves like a girl unexpectedly pregnant, trying to fall in love quickly. It's difficult to explain to people in Baltimore that this is the year the game won. <laughs> 